Our student panel is here. They're going to give uh, their candid response, their candid responses to your questions. So um, Nate Geyer is going to be our moderator, and he's going to introduce his his panel. And we're going to um, excuse ourselves for a little while, so you guys can have a student to student interaction. Um, but we'll just be upstairs if anybody needs anything. And uh, you guys have an hour and a half, so have a good conversation. Nate. Thank you. Um, First of all, hello everybody. So as I uh, was so wonderfully introduced, my name is Nate Geyer. I am a first year MPP here at the Ford School of Public Policy. And I'm also I'm from Southwest Michigan and I attended U of M as my undergrad institution. So um, yeah, I guess I'll be moderating this thing. It's kind of impromptu. Um, let's, uh, let's have everybody else introduce yourselves. Just you know, name your program right now. Something interesting about yourself, I guess. I didn't do that, but I'll make you do it. Because I'm the moderator and I have that kind of power. Oh, my turn. Okay. Hi, I'm <clears throat> Prabdeep. I am a first year MPP. I am a dual with a higher ed here degree as well. Um, my name tag is wrong. I'm technically 15, not 16. But whatever. Let's cross that out. Uh, that's all, whatever. Um, I'm from California, so I'll try to minimize the amount of time I compare Michigan to California. Because um, I've been told I do that too much. Um, anything else? Interesting, I'm from California. <laughs> Hi, my name is Michonne, and I am from Alaska. I lived in Alaska until I was 22, and I lived in DC for two years, and I worked as a government contractor, and then I started school here in the fall, so I'm a first year MPP MSW, so I'm a dual Master's of Public <laughs> Policy and Master's of Social Work um, student. Um, and I guess something interesting about me is I'm from Alaska. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Luis Contreras, second year MPP. I'm uh, about to graduate and go back to the real world, I guess, and find a job. Um, I spent half of my life growing up in Mexico and the other half in California. Um, and an interesting thing about me is I'm going to the, I'm part of the China trip. So I'll be in China this May as part of the Ford School. So. Thank you, okay. So um, we have a couple of uh, just questions, kind of things to get us going here a little bit. So if you guys have any questions or anything, we'll, I don't know, we'll, we'll just go with it, okay? It should be, pretty, should be pretty informal. Yeah, raise your hand, is that, yeah, is that the, yeah, let's go with that. Raise your hand, we'll, we'll, get, you, we'll, uh, we'll get your question in front of the panel. So I guess let's start off with, um, you know, let's start off with uh, uh, your course that has most interested you so far here at the Ford School. I'll give you, I'll give you a moment to mull that over. Um, I, t I am currently enrolled in a course that is with a visiting professor. He's a Towsley Foundation um, visiting scholar or visiting practitioner, I should say. And so um, a lot of people will come into the Ford School from different places and they're kind of once in a lifetime opportunities to study with um, people that are doing some really cool policy work in their, in their fields right now. So that particular professional is uh, um, a former ambassador to the State Department as well as a deputy chief at the OECD. And so he brings a lot of real world experience and a real world policy, um, real world policy work to the classroom. Okay, you guys ready? Cool. I have an answer. Okay, cool. Yes. Um, so my most interesting course is one that I'm enrolled in right now. Um, it'll touch on a few things that you maybe have heard about. So it's not here at the Ford School. It's over down the street at the Ross School of Business, and it's a seven-week class. It's a doctoral course that I'm taking. So you've probably heard of Cognates that you have to take as part of the coursework here. Um, it's really interesting just because it should, I mean, for me, the reason I came to Michigan was because it, they kept on telling me, we're all about interdisciplinary. We care about, like, doing things the new, innovative way. And one of the awesome ways that they encourage that is that they allow us to take classes in other schools and other departments. Um, you, it doesn't hurt to send the professor an email beforehand to make sure it's okay that a master student enters maybe like a doctoral class or something like that. But it's been most interesting because it's like really forced me to like think outside of my like policy and education mindset um, and approach things from a new way. And that's definitely something really, something to keep in mind as you're like picking classes to challenge yourself. Um, so I didn't take a whole lot of um, electives so far. Since I'm a dual degree student, I've been trying to focus on getting as many core classes as I can completed um, in my first year. So I've taken one elective, and that was here at the Ford School, and that is um, civil rights. Um, that was a good class. Um, 
it was very law-based. We looked at a lot of case studies, um, civil rights um, lawsuits, and just kind of dissected them and talked about them. And um, it was very informative, and I learned a lot. Um, as far as the most useful, I took two classes at the school of social work. Um, there, there were also core classes. Um, I would say that um, the most useful class so far would be my statistics, and I haven't taken program eval. So I know that program eval, calculus, and econ, all, all kind of, so econ, calculus, and statistics all kind of um, meld with, go with the program evaluation, like the program evaluation puts it all together basically. So I haven't taken that yet, and I can see that where that would be most useful, but um, so far for me it's been statistics. I can see doing that in the future because I would like to um, do a lot of research on um, large populations. So um, that's been the most useful for me. And another thing too I wanted to add is when you're in a dual degree program, a lot of the times you will end up doing your first year in one school and then your second year in the other school. Um, and if depending on how quickly you get your um, coursework done, your third year will be kind of a mixture of both. Um, and you do have options to go into other schools, such as a law school, business school, um, school of education, et cetera. So. Uh, for me so far, the uh, two of my favorite courses have been with Professor Catherine Dominguez, Macroeconomics and International Financial Policy. Um, I like the courses because it informs you how you can use macro policy and models to uh, come up with uh, policy recommendations. Uh, if you're interested in um, you know, market, open market operations, uh, fiscal policy, monetary policy, uh, it's, it's, it's fun, it's a fun course. Uh, you actually get to do a final project um, on, a, on a country and you get to present it to the class but also to the Ford School. Um, so last year we work on Poland monetary and fiscal policy and how uh, they can uh, use that to their advantage and keep their, their budget uh, under control. Um, another useful class, it's also um, data analysis using Excel. Um, a lot of people tend to use Stata or um, SPSS for that kind of work, but most organizations out there usually have Excel and they use this as their main database. And it's pretty cool uh, to start doing like uh, big data analysis using this this particular tool and, and how to like manipulate data and you know come up with results without spending too much money in these big statistical packages like, like Stata that organizations don't have. So that's, uh, that's definitely a, an excellent course to, uh, to take and actually just apply for a job where they send me a big file with data uh, in Excel and I was able to quickly clean it up, come up with answers for that we're looking for and so I was able to move on to the next round of uh, uh, interviews. So it's an awesome course to take. So. How about you guys? Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Burning so questions like right now? Some direction for us. Um, what's your least favorite thing about the Ford School? So the question is, what's your least favorite thing about the Ford School? <laughs> you can say your answer. No, I can't. You can't. talk about California. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody else start while Prob is uh, thinking about not California-related answers. <laughs> Do you guys have anything? That's fair, yes, it's really fair. Um, I guess for me it's um, kind of like the um, the cold weather is also kind of like bad. You know, I spent like 10 years in California, so coming here, is, it was kind of rough. Um, the other one thing is the, um, the policy simulation that we do every year, there's a requirement. Uh, and, and, and I don't like that because they cut my uh, winter vacation short, so I have to come back <laughs> a little early. and. You know, when you go back to California, you don't want to like cut it short. So that's the only one thing. Um, other than that, I guess you kind of like you make of this opportunity what you can, like what you want to of it. So you know, I try to take advantage of every resource out there. Um, it's not given to you in a silver plate. You have to go get it, um, and you really you know you you can either have a, an awesome experience and do make the best out of it, or just have a miserable time, but that's really up to the student. So I think being here at Michigan and being here at four, you already have like a leg up and like a very big opportunity that other students across the nation will wish they could have, so. So <clears throat> the thing that I cared least about, um, I don't care about football, which is like sacrilegious here. Um, 
So for me, that was like really frustrating because I also don't drink. So for me to get involved in the social culture here at first was really jarring. Michigan's one of seven universities in the nation that has their game day before their first day of classes. So if that kind of tells you the institutional like commitment towards that being part of the culture, um, I'm sure all of you have like some sport or something you're interested in, but that for me was like, I recognized that early on that I had to make that active effort um, to care, which on top of everything else, transitioning was just like, okay, I have to go make friends now. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a little frustrating, but you got over it. People seem to like me okay, so it worked out. Yeah. Um, so for me, so when I grew up in Alaska, we drove everywhere, and also in DC, I pretty much, I was able to drive to work every day, so I'm used to that. I'm not used to commuting by bus. And so I guess that would, that would probably be the hardest uh, thing I had to deal with so far here. Um, having to bus it every day because I live um, I don't live on campus I live about two miles off campus and I did that because I wanted to save some money because on campus It's quite a bit more expensive um, So I live right on the like border of Ypsilanti and Ann Arbor I don't know if you guys heard about Ypsilanti yet, but um, I found a really nice place That's about half the price for my own apartment versus having to right right Shanera? I know <laughs> I me and her we live in the same building, but um yeah, so it's a great place, and so I decided to live there, and so I bus it every day, and you know, it's a good uh, 20, 30 minute um, commute, or no more like 30 to 40 minute commute, depending on where I'm going on campus. Um, but even though it's a pain, it's at least I get to catch up on reading, which is good, but when I was driving, I didn't get, I didn't get to do that. So this one just posited everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just uh, one quick comment, and I think you had a question. Um, so in terms of football, Pradeep, um, go to the football games. <laughs> Please go to the go tailgating. No at one least, cares about yeah, the game. tailgating. At least go once in your life to the big house. It's one of the biggest stadiums in the world. So go check it out. You know, it's it's one of it's it's uh, it's a particular experience uh, that you probably won't get uh, anywhere else. Um, the other thing that I didn't like about Ann Arbor is like you know I'm Mexican. I love Mexican food and tacos, and you won't get any of that here. So <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, you gotta travel a little far to get that that good food out there. Um, you can continue with the question. Yeah, I just had a question about what activities around the school or in the community are you guys involved in besides outside of your class? Okay, so the question is, what activities and um, I, I I was gonna try to add another word there, but I just can't. I, synonyms and organizations. Thank you. What other activities and organizations are we involved with? It, is it relative to the school or just yeah. outside of the school? Does it matter? Okay, what else, what else are we doing? What else are you guys doing? So there is a lot to do here in Ann Arbor. It's actually really overwhelming. And for a really introverted person like me, it's really, it was actually kind of hard because there's a lot to do. There's so many, you're gonna get a ton of invites. People are really communal here. Um, there's lots of fun parties on the weekends, lots of get togethers. Um, there's a lot of student organizations on campus here at the Ford School and off out in other schools um, that are very involved, do all kinds of fundraising activities. Um, like we just had Ford Fad something. Fab Ford, Fab Ford, Idol. Ford Idol. Yes, Prabhjeep yeah. sang at the Idol. It was karaoke event. It was event. not singing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I wasn't there, unfortunately. Uh, I had to do statistics homework. But I heard it was really fun, and I was really bummed I didn't get to go. But um, yeah, it, um, there's so much to do. Like. Seriously, um, and unfortunately, I didn't get to participate a whole lot in that. Other than that, there's um, like I'm involved in the Native American Student Association. That's a new Native org here on campus, um, and we're throwing a powwow this weekend. And so, if you're bored this weekend, if you have anything to do, it'll be all the way running from like 10 until um, about nine o'clock, eight o'clock on Saturday, and then on Sunday it ends around like six-ish. But it's great, lots of dancing, singing. I don't know if you're familiar with the powwow, but it's just um, a lot of Native American tribes get together. Um, Non-Native people come and it's just dancing, singing, celebration. It's a great time to get together and be a big community. And um, yeah, so there's a lot to do. That should not be a worry. This place is a really fun place, so yeah. Go ahead. Do you feel like this program, are there resources to prepare you for a job post so it's about it's about support for getting internships and, and jobs through the school, whether it's classes or through the resources here. What do you guys think? Yeah. 
Um, I guess I can answer that since I'm also looking for a job. Um, I think the career services uh, of great help. Uh, they definitely have like a database of like, you know, jobs that they update almost every day. Um, you'll get newsletters and whatnot. You can meet with people at the career center. They can help you out with your um, writing samples, resumes, um, just about everything. Uh, they will not certainly hand you a job right away and tell you like, hey, don't worry about it. Here's a job for you. You don't even have to do anything. That's the business school. Uh, <laughs> that's the MBA. Uh, um, you got to do a little bit of work, but uh, what they do is they, they have uh, a lot of connections and the Ford School network is wide. And uh, every year they have the DC trip where you go to uh, Washington DC and meet with uh, Ford School alumni. It's working in different organizations. And they're actually very helpful, uh, either giving you contacts or um, you know, sharing information on jobs, how to get there, and basically moving up your application up the pile. So, you know, that's kind of like the best resource you have here is is the network you have. And once you go to like DC, you know, if you tell them you go to Ford School, that name carries a lot of weight out there. So. No, go. <laughs> I will add one comment, I guess. Yeah. Um, as a first year, so I'm not looking for jobs right now, but we all are required to do an internship over the summer. So I would say that over the course of the year, there are plenty of opportunities and they post a lot of things. Um, everyone, to my knowledge, finds one because you have to find one, so don't worry about finding one. It may not be like the number one choice you had, but there's definitely plenty of resources to help you get there. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, I guess, was the first thing that I did when I got here was I started talking to people that I knew about, like, these are my interests. Do you know anyone in the existing, like, Ford School that is interested in this? And they said yes, and they would connect me to people. And that was actually something, like, the second years are more than happy to talk to the first years about, like, their past experiences. And, like, I remember some of the people that I talk to now who are second years, I met them because of an email, not because I ran into them, like, down the hallway or in class or something like that. So building off the network, not only the alumni network, but the existing network here in the school. Yeah. Did, did any of you guys attend any of the workshops that Graduate Career Services put on throughout the year? Yeah. These yeah. Guys? So, okay. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. If we can talk a little bit about the core coursework, and I don't know what your backgrounds were, um, about the level of difficulty. You know, a lot of us, I assume, have taken you know economics and statistics courses in undergrad. You know, was there a lot of overlap in those courses that you took? Uh, you know, were, were you felt like you were behind and you had to catch way up in order to, to get there? What, what was that level of difficulty? Right. Core quantitative work. What did you? What did you guys experience? So I particularly didn't have a strong quantitative background when I came here. I did uh, international studies um, for my undergrad. Um, I took a one-year stats course, uh, which didn't really help that much. Uh, and so when I came to the Ford School, you know, part of the reason I came to the Ford School was because of those quantitative courses, and, and I and I knew empl employers really value those skills. So um, I took my my econ A and calculus class uh, that first semester, and that was probably one of the toughest semesters, but also more, one of the most rewarding semesters that I, uh, I had. Uh, faculty really like cares about their students and they will do everything to make sure you learn the material. Uh, in, in my micro class, I was struggling on um, the first few weeks, so I talked to the professors. Uh, I talked to the professor and like I went to office hours and he was willing to help me outside class. I went to the GSI's office hours and they were willing to help me also. And so the professor um, also made arrangements uh, with the administration so I could get a tutor, um, so I could succeed in the class. And so it, it, um, that was like a, a great resource that the Ford School makes available to students that probably don't have that background. Um, you know, they, they really try to help you out and make sure you like get what you pay for and get a good education, so. Yeah, and I could add to that too. Um, so I have my undergrad degree in social work, so I had minimal um, quant experience, and I was extremely nervous, like really nervous, to do any like calculus. I, I was like, this is crazy, Why am I, I'm not gonna do that. But um, yeah, uh, well I have to, but I was really nervous about it, and it really wasn't that bad. Um, and the reasons why is not that the coursework isn't difficult, but because that we have, um, every Friday we have a section class where we have GSIs teach us, their graduate student assistants, they help with teaching 
um, and helping us with our coursework through the quant classes. And so they taught us, they gave us extra help on Fridays. Um, there's office hours for all the GSIs and the teachers. Um, there's tutors available. Um, and I took advantage of all of those and I made it, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. So um, I don't think the quant stuff should um, make you too nervous. Not as nervous as I was at least. <laughs> Yeah. Don't be afraid to take the waiver exams. Um, I came in with an applied math and rhetoric background um, straight from undergrad, so I tested out of the calc and the econ requirements, and I took stats for fun. So it's, if you're a math person, um, I would definitely recommend taking the waiver exams because that frees up your time to take elective courses, which is what I did my fall semester, and I would take two extra classes I wouldn't have been able to take otherwise. I agree. I pa I waved out of calculus, but um, I did very poorly. I barely passed all of those classes when I was an undergrad. Um, <laughs> bad memories, but um, I did really well here. Um, I I uh, did a little bit of studying before for calculus. I didn't for econ or stats, um, but I still I still got through the, these courses here with flying colors, mostly because of the the teaching capability of the professors and the GSIs, as well as just the the way that we can collaborate between students here. A lot of the coursework that we do uh, involves a lot of reasoning and a lot of uh, a, a lot of talking through the the logic of uh, a lot of the problems that we have in front of us. It's not all just. Um, crunching numbers. A lot of it's also behind, like looking at the, the reasoning behind why these things are there and the practical applications that they have. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just um, if you guys can think back to your, um, to your first semester, um, what's one thing that you would recommend for um, any of us starting our first semester? Something that you would say is an absolute, you must Okay, something we must do when we, when we start out to really feel like we're being successful in our first semester. That's a good question, thank you. You got that? Um, for me, it was really like connecting with the second years um, that had done things that I was interested in. So I'm, like I said, I was a dual with the higher ed, so I met with every single existing dual in higher ed and MPP to figure out how I could like mold my classes to the way that I wanted to do them and like figure out the trick like the tricks to take the classes I wanted to take and not take the ones I didn't want to take but even from like a large like perspective of like careers and internships like talking to them gave me the idea of like the realm of possibility of what I could do and where I should begin focusing my energies for the kinds of things I was interested in um, and yeah I had a lot of coffee those first few weeks <laughs> Um, I will say just in, in general, like um, academic wise, make sure you do your homework, your reading on time and don't wait. When they give you a problem set, don't wait until like the day before because you're going to be crying. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it's a stats. Uh, they tend to belong. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, as, as soon as you get your, your problem sets and whatnot, make sure you, you start doing them right away. Um, and, and collaborate with your classmates. That is the best way to get ahead. Uh, sometimes a lot of boss don't want to like get together because you think that uh, one of like you're too dumb and they're so smart. But literally, a lot of people are really good at pretending that they're super smart. Um, a lot of us are like the same. Like you know, yeah. There's always the like super smart kids, but even even them, they're willing to help you out a lot. So. Um, like like um, we said before, you know, it's it, it, it's it's a lot about collaboration here at the Forest School, not competition. So get together with your classmates. If you need help, go to the office hours. You know, um, a lot of people don't take advantage of that, uh, and the professors are literally just waiting there so you can come and ask questions. So take advantage of all of those resources. One thing that I could recommend. Um, Something that my wife did actually. My wife is also a student here at the Ford School. Um, she blocked out time at the very beginning of her semester, as well as earlier this semester, for time in the Career Center. Um, I would say she blocked out maybe two hours um, every week for that first semester, and then she blocked off a little bit more, I think anywhere between four and six that sec at the beginning of the second semester, to make sure that she really started working on internships 
and um, she got an internship at the Government Accountability Office this summer. Um, last year, there were no Ford School students that actually had successfully gained an internship at GAO, but um, I think, I mean, in part, it was because of a, a hiring blitz, but also because she was really on top of her stuff, and she just um, decided she would um, she would really look into all of these opportunities. And because she put in that time at the beginning, it became a lot easier for her, and she, get, she got a lot more access to the people that were working at Graduate Career Services, who are extremely helpful people that, that really know their stuff. Um, I think that's, that's something that can also just lead to, to better networking and better uh, professional development stuff in the future. Yeah, if you've been through a grad program before, that's you probably you probably know what's the deal. But if you haven't, then like me, you kind of get you, you kind of get a little bit stressed out. So making sure you have those 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 um, coping mechanisms to help you cool down at the end of the day or at the end of the week, they're yeah. they're necessary. Yeah. Absolutely. Mine mine this week is Captain America and Tabletop Gaming Day over at over at the comic shop on Main Street. <laughs> Someone else had a question? Let's go with you. Kind of along similar lines, um, are there any like books, uh, online resources, things like that, for people that have a strong a background in, in politics about coming in that you might recommend uh, to give you a, a just a, a little bit of a leg up to the learning curve, not so to speak? Um, in terms of the, at least for calculus, um, they do send out a website that you can, um, you know, practice and kind of like refresh your memory in terms of math. Um, um, student services will send that to you at one point. Uh, and there's also the calculus bootcamp that it starts, I believe it's a week before the actual classes start. So if you could make it to that, uh, it's, it's a great resource to, to take advantage. Uh, the other one thing, and that's one thing that I did before coming to, um, when I, before I started classes is during spring preview, I met with professors. Uh, particularly the, the professor teaching statistics and program evolve, and I asked them for resources ahead of time, and so they were able to send me uh, um, coursework material. So I was uh, doing a lot of that work uh, over the summer, so I didn't feel that um, out of place when I came here uh, and I started my classes. So reach out to professors, send them an email, and they'll be more than happy to uh, point you out to resources. Um, as far as quant classes, um, Khan Academy, that's right, that's right. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a really good resource if you want to get a head start, um, especially on your algebra, because what really is tricky is not the calculus, it's the algebra. Um, so that really helps you with your algebra skills. Um, as far as the non-quant classes, um, for me, I just re made sure I did my readings before I went to class. And as long as I did my readings, for the most part, we were on topic and I was able to follow um, the conversation. Um, so as long as you do that, you should be fine. But I, I agree, though, that um, Lewis had a really good advice, though, if you go to your teachers and just kind of ask them ahead of time, they might be able to give you some more resources. I stalked the Ford School website and found a bunch of syllabi and then checked out those books from the library. And even for courses that I wasn't taking, I even did some for undergraduate courses. It is crazy. <laughs> Like, I read like three books. It's not like. <laughs> you need to read like zero books beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> I know you don't need to read. I know you like, don't need to like read I books. I would say unread some books over summer. <laughs> Stop it. God. Oh my God. Don't give me your shit, Prof. Oh, but, <laughs> but if you are in the mood to read um, two books that I think that will help you make, um, become a critical thinker, if you haven't already read them, are Thinking Fast and Slow by Kahneman and Tversky. And. Uh, Oh, what's that other one? Um, yeah. It's the one that we had to read. For, no, we didn't have to read it. Oh, damn, I can't remember. So I'm fast a and slow, and and. Yeah, I can't remember the other one. Like yeah, I saw. That's so, the better one. Yeah. No, if you think if you think of it, just shout it into the microphone. So Luis had to leave us. He had to go to class. So oh, okay. we'll miss him. Um, oh, there, well, lots of questions. Okay, let's. We should make a cue or something. Um, he was up first. Were you up first? Go for it. Kind of, kind of broad, but is it worth it, both in terms of time, money, and the, the time to kind of give up, given that you're working full out for three years? Well, we're all first years, so. <laughs> I think it's worth it. Oh, I'm really enjoying my experience. It's, I mean, I feel like when you're in college, it's like, it's a time for you to like, 
you're like exploring, you're, um, you're learning about yourself, like it's a really great time and it's a time for yourself, you know. Um, and that's kind of how I take this experience for me. Yeah, it's, it's for me, it's three years, my dual degree program, that's a long time, I know, but um, I'm enjoying it um, and it's definitely worth it. I don't know exactly what the outcomes are gonna be when I graduate, but um, I do think that it's gonna increase my opportunities for jobs, definitely, especially if I feel like um, University of Michigan is very competitive school, has a great reputation um, for the most part, and I know when I talk to people and tell them I'm going to University of Michigan, they're like, oh, well, that's a really reputable school, so um, I think it does help your, increase your chances of getting a job, a better job when you're done with school, for sure. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to go to grad schools. I was in a job that, I was in a kind of a um, support position and I wasn't happy, I, well, I, was, I would say I was happy, but um, wasn't ecstatic about my job, I'd say, so um, that's why I decided to go to grad school, because I wanted to become more sellable and maybe get into a management position, so um, I think it's definitely worth it. I would say so, yes, and I, when I was looking at my phone, I was trying to find the book. It's called Nudge, Improving Decisions Nudge. About Health, Wealth, and Happiness. I think that's, that's what I was looking for. Nudge, I'd heard of uh, that one, actually. And yeah, I think it's worth it. I mean, I'll actually I'll conditional that on figure out what it is you want out of these next two years. If you don't know what you want and you're kind of just wandering through it, then it's by default, you, you may or may not, it's gonna be completely random whether it's gonna be worth it or not. But if you have a clear idea or at least a clear sense of what it is that you want out of your program out of these two years, then you'll make the right connections, you'll talk to the right people, um, you'll pay attention to the right topics in class, you'll figure out which readings you need to do and don't need to do. Um, yeah, so figure that out first and then answer that question. Um, Tim and I had something to say, but now I can't remember. We're running short on time. Yeah. We Are we? I thought we yeah. had until 3.30. We do, but there oh, are a lot do. of Oh, we do. Oh, I thought we had until 3. Sorry. Yeah, no, we have until 3.30, so we still have plenty of time. No, it's okay. okay. Um, yes. Oh, more questions. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you guys tell us more about your relationships with your faculty mentors? Like, how you got to them? Um, and then, as far as So I had a faculty mentor, but it just, um, and I prioritized it so that it was within my, my relative field of expertise and um, generally um, something that I'm really interested in, but um, I don't think that's my most valuable faculty connection. Um, I am mostly made um, one of my best faculty connections through my coursework by taking an elective with, uh, with a, um, Professor Susan Waltz here. Um, with her human rights course. I think that um, taking her course and going to her office hours and talking through um, current issues of the day as well as just a course, uh, as well as a coursework and different projects that, that we had in the class, I think that is what really solidified that relationship. And um, it's not to say that I um, couldn't have made that first relationship work, it's just that um, I think the the way that I went about the um, the way that I went about it with the faculty mentor that I do have right now was a lot more natural feeling to me. And so it depend, it's, it's gonna depend on your personality as well, but I think, I think a lot of people find really good faculty, um, faculty mentors here just through their coursework. I mean, if after you commit, they'll send out an email about how to, like, the process for matriculating. Mm -hmm. One of that is going to be filling out a form that says, these are my top three choices. Um, of people who I'd like to be assigned as a faculty mentor, and that's basically how it works. And they'll email you back, or you'll find out on the day of orientation or something, yeah. who you're assigned to. Um, I would just say, like off of his point, the faculty mentor is just a way for the, like the Ford School to be like, institutionally, you have someone, but I would definitely say that that's not your end all be, that's probably starting point. Yeah. Um, people typically find, don't, they rely on their faculty mentor simply as like, a point of contact, not as the one person they rely on. Yeah, I think, oh, go ahead. Oh, are you sure? Go. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was assigned a faculty mentor pretty, because I'm a dual and MSW um, MPP program, um, I was assigned a, a faculty mentor. I didn't really get a top choice or choose or anything. Um, and she's wonderful. She, if you're in MSW MPP program, she's super responsive. She helps you sign up for classes. Um, she'll connect you to opportunities, you know, like research assistant jobs possibly or anything. Like she's just super helpful. And she even, um, in the beginning of the semester, which I didn't get to go to, she sent, she um, planned a 
dual happy hour. So all of us dual MSW MPP program students, we all got together and well, I didn't go, but they all went, got together and <laughs> um, yeah. Who, I don't who is this? Social things. Uh, Sandra? Sandra, okay. Mm -hmm. Sandra Dansker, her name is Sandra Dansker. Um, and she, yeah, she's, was very, she's been very helpful. And she usually meets with me every semester at least once and um, helps me make sure that I'm on track with my classes. Go for it. Do it. Overall, like, your experience How has that all been? Like, we had the faculty panel this morning, and they all seemed very accomplished. Who was it? Can you tell yeah, us? Yeah, it was who, on. Who was on it? Um, List. Does anyone want to? Shabita. Shabita Patasarathy. Yeah. You guys done any research with any professors here? Yeah. So I think one thing is like we have research centers here. Um, from my understanding, typically they're looking for people who are, because of their paid GSRA positions, they're looking for people who are like, have the skills. So if you're looking to like learn how to do research or something like that, you may like be better off like finding a doctoral student and working with them and then using that as a connection to find a faculty person. Um, but don't be afraid to try. Like the worst you're gonna do, get is like, sorry, I have no openings, which then just means yeah. you move on to the next person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Who is next? Some one of these. Yeah, well, let's get let's get one of you. Let's get there. We have to call it. Oh, do, do, I don't I don't know. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to We're also going to stop answering every single one. We've all taken like seven exams this week in our life. <laughs> My brain is for. So, so let's go, <laughs> let's go with you and then we'll head back over to this way and then we'll just kind of figure it out from there. The worst moderator ever, sorry. For those of you who are going to your internship this summer, I was wondering where you're going. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to Santa Barbara, California. I'm working with a, <laughs> I know, I know. Um, I'm working with a nonprofit called Direct Relief International that uh, specializes in delivering humanitarian aid in the form of medical supplies to um, crisis zones and other places around the world, as well as places within the United States experiencing a natural disaster. I am gonna be at the Michigan Department of Education through the data fellowship that's done through the Ep uh, Education Policy Initiative. Um, so I'll be here all summer. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. You can answer. I don't have an internship. I don't either you do you. No, well, I do. Yeah, it's your just job. three out of school. <laughs> okay. So since I'm a dual student, I'm doing my social work to, my social work um, internship first because the social work internship is required in, to do it in Michigan, and I prefer to keep my apartment this summer and having to try to sublet it and all that, and then coming back in the fall. So it makes sense for me just to stay here and do my social work internship. And I'm hoping to get into the American Indian Health and Family Services in Detroit. Um, it's a really great organization. Um, doing a lot of various different things, child welfare stuff and um, substance, substance abuse, um, a lot of cultural activities. They, they do a ton of things for Native people here um, in the area. And um, so that's what I'm doing. Um, and at the School of Social Work, I don't know if any, is, is there any dual MSW MPP students are interested? Okay, oh, neat. great. Great. Yeah, so there's, um, there is, you have to do, with the School of Social Work, you're gonna have to do um, an internship throughout the year as well as the summer. So this summer I'll be doing it two days a week, eight hours a day, um, and then I'll also be doing it in the fall, two days a week, and then in the spring or winter, we call it, um, two days a week. Um, and so it's a little different. In the Ford School here, we just get it all knocked out in one summer. Um, at the School of Social Work, um, we, we kind of spread it out throughout the year, so you kind of get a more longer experience at, the, at your internship. So um, yeah, so it's a little different, but it's kind of nice. I like. I kind of like the spreading it out and getting. You get to experience the organization for a lot longer and see it kind of grow um, yeah. throughout a period of time versus being there in a quick ten weeks. So mm -hmm. both ways is really good. It just kind of got to weigh the pros and cons. Yeah. Um, I wanted to add too. Um, so I did say that you have to. I spread mine out. I spread my social work program out, and most social work students do that. 
but you don't have to. So if you want to knock it out in one summer, I'm pretty sure you can work it out with your faculty, your faculty advisor um, and make it work if that's something that fits your schedule. They're pretty flexible of how you want to do it, but most, I just said that because most social work students, including me, is going to um, spread it out throughout three semesters. So it's kind of recommended, but not required. Um, so let's, let's, let's go with you up there. Sorry about skipping you. Sorry about skipping you up there. Um, so a question I had, um, you know, we've talked a lot about things that are going on here at the school. We've referred a little bit to, you know, the social atmosphere of the school. Um, you know, across the panel, what have your guys' experience uh, been, experiences been managing the relationships outside the school? So relationships with your, you know, former peers, fellow colleagues, significant others who are either in state, out of state, et cetera, and how that's been, you know, while you've been in graduate school. Because I know for myself, I'll be moving up here with my significant others, so I kind of want to have an idea of a little bit of what to expect, because she won't be here. Mm. You said she's going to be here or not going to be here with you? She will be moving to Michigan. She'll be moving here, but she won't be like in grad school. So she will be on like oh. two different schedules. I see. I see. Hmm. I feel like you should, what, well, I know you're. Well, yeah, she's here in the school. Yeah. <laughs> so I see her often enough. <laughs> yeah. They're literally in the count. same classes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Divide and conquer. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Aren't you happy you moderated this? Yeah, I'm so happy. <laughs> so happy. Um, I don't know. I guess um, I guess it's more difficult to manage the other relationships outside of the school. I, I still have a lot of friends um, that remain in Ann Arbor from my undergraduate days. Um, so I guess uh, I spend a lot of time studying, even even on uh, some of the weekends, but. Um, that doesn't that doesn't mean that these social these social events don't don't ever occur and that I never get to see never get to see any of these friends, but it does it just seems like it requires a lot of scheduling and that's like the last thing you want to do when you want to hang out with your friends is you know hey I'll pen I'll pencil you in for Saturday at one from one to three you know you don't want to do that. Um, yeah, I know. I, I do that too. I do it. You just don't want to. I don't yeah. mind. You don't mind? No. Oh, well, look at you. It's okay. A calendar. <laughs> what else do you do with a calendar? I don't know. I feel like it should be more natural. That's just my opinion, though. Okay. In any case, um, <laughs> I do. I do feel like it's it's harder to to manage like actual just um, so, social time, even with my wife, just based on the just based on the uh, way that coursework happens, and I'm I'm. I'm probably do 12 hour days most for most every day of the week if not a little bit more just based on classes and based on other things that I have to do because I also work um, I work at one of the offices on on campus um, it's just it's a little difficult but I don't yeah it's something I've started doing in grad school is having a calendar like a, I always had a like a little planner since like high school but I never use it too not a lot at least but since I started grad school I've been had to I had to be really organized and I had to pencil in my social, you know, social time, whatever it is, you know, um, and that's that's what really helped me. Because yeah, you do, you you have a lot of work in grad school, <laughs> but you can make it work. You yeah. just stay organized. As much no, as possible. Yeah. it works. It's not to say that it doesn't work. It's just it's it's more It'll difficult like than you envision. Class. <laughs> and like, and it's not like you're you won't be the only one going through it yeah. as well. So it's not like any of the events or any of the social things that Ford throws on. It won't be like you can't bring your significant other, right? right. So like, think of that as well. It's not like you come in here, you are single. It's no. No, everybody. Yeah, we don't have that power. There. No, no. And play, I mean, yeah. There's plenty of social events where it's just it's it's open to to people that are affiliated with the Ford School in any way whatsoever. Mm -hmm. we're we're a pretty open community. We're really accepting. So. I have, a, I have a friend who was serving in the Peace Corps in Nicaragua who came here. I met, I, I met him here. It makes it sound like I knew him before. But no, we met here at the Ford School. And his wife was still um, in the visa application process because she's, she's, a, uh, she's a, a Nicaraguan. And so um, she just came this semester. And they've been, they've been a happy little couple, a couple ever since. And she comes to the Ford School. And the people that can speak Spanish, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll greet her. And they'll, they'll go over and talk with her. And, um, welcome her to the school and keep keep her involved in everything that's going on. Three or four? Yes. What? No, it's three oh four. Oh, it is. It's three oh four. I should shut up and let's questions. move on with the other questions. 
Let's go to you first. I know Michonne talked about this a little before, but the housing and, and making decisions about housing. Um, how soon after making a decision to come here should we start looking for housing? What are some of the housing options? The I next day. Right, right now. now. <laughs> right now, May. Just like yeah. up on Craigslist. Yep. Yeah. I found my place on Craigslist as well, and I came. Yeah. Did I see it? No, I didn't see it when I was visiting. But when I when I was here for preview weekend, I went and saw like seven apartments. You know, got information on prices, and I found a lot of their um, information off of Craigslist. I believe was the main place I found mm -hmm. um, information. Um, I yeah. did get a list. Someone gave me a list. I don't remember who of great places to look. Yeah, there's a university site. Yeah. I know they send it out to people who've already like accepted in, but, right. but you can look up through the Ford School website. Um, I think you search off-campus housing on the UMish portal. I think that's what you do. Um, I'm in university housing, so not very helpful there. Um, let's go with uh, you, sir. Yeah, I was just going to throw out another one. It's actually a company that I work for, um, Alpha Management Group, and they run a couple of houses in the area, one of them being a graduate house, another one being a fraternity house. And they're actually good fraternity. Um, Try house, and they, they have borders in the house, so those are options for people who might be late to game. Yeah. Co-ops too. Yeah, co-ops so are cool. So that's a great one. So there's a couple different co-ops on campus that are for master's students. Yeah. Um, one of, there's one actually really close by, isn't yeah. there, on, on uh, Hill Street? There's yeah. non-university co-ops too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I live in one. One of them, I, I know our enrollment period is but those can be really affordable. Yeah. And cool. Don't be, uh, don't be scared off if people say that house isn't available until such and such a date, but you can always call them and say, hey, I'm moving in a little early. Yeah. Yeah. We live in on the like border of Ypsilanti and Ann Arbor, and the apartment building's name is Town and Country. If you ever are interested, it's really in, it's not that expensive. You get a whole one bedroom apartment to yourself. I'll just it's six seventy, and you only pay electric, and the electric isn't that much for a whole. And it, but the bed, one bedroom apartment is ginormous. I'm not even kidding. Like it's ginormous, and you get a whole balcony to yourself. Um, and and it's, like I said, it's like a 20 um, minute bus ride, 20 yeah. to 30 minute bus ride if you include the walk. So it really isn't that bad. But what I would recommend if you do go all the way out to Ypsilanti or off campus is to really double check the bus routes. Because I know some people who like, they went a couple miles out and they got stuck on a really horrible bus route because they didn't double check that. Yeah. And they just assumed yeah. that it was a good bus route. And they ended up, you know, hour commute yeah. or you know, hour walk or whatever, it's just Yeah, it happens. Pain. Okay, I think we, oh. Town, oh, I'm sorry. Town and Country Apartments? <laughs> yeah. You? Like it's a magazine. They don't have a, I know, right? They don't no, have a website either, story. so. I got you. I think they're good routes. I think they're good systems. I, I, haven't, I haven't had any problems with the white buses or the blue buses so far. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about workload. I know that you mentioned you're working 12 hours a day, but that's including other it, Yeah, it includes like a 10 hour, 10 hour work week that I also have at my office. But sometimes more, sometimes 20, depends on the week. Hmm? I work at the International Center um, under the assistant for, the assistant program director. We do workshops for international students. So uh, more about the workload. I think it, like, it might be useful to hear in terms of like, how many pages a week you're reading, how much you're writing. Oh, oh shoot. Hours, like, different people work yeah. at different speeches. Well, that's what you're supposed to do. Right? <laughs> so every, for every credit hour you have, you're supposed to study for three. I think that's yeah. the general rule, of, rule for that. Yeah, you call, do it, yeah. Um, I know you said you work, do, you, do the rest of you work while you're in school, and if so, how many hours a week do you work? Yeah, I, so as part of my program, I have to do a year-long internship. So I work, um, yeah. That's cool. I work about 12 to 15 hours at the union. Um, it's, I work in like a particular office that has to do with like student life and student organization management. So I do that on top of my classes. No, I hear you. I was thinking like if you can't, if you, if you don't want to work, just find a job that pays you to study, like up in the library. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of jobs around campus that essentially are just paying you to study. Yeah. You just have to really look for them. They're actually not that hard to find. It's like 80% of the jobs that are on campus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unfortunate in that I did not get one of those, but there's several jobs here at the Ford School that do do that, like up in the library, as well as in different offices around campus. You just have to look for them. You'll find them. I it's not bad. The um, I would say no. They'll email them out. Yeah. 
they're kind of competitive though, so. Network. -wise. I don't know. I don't know which one of you two is up first. I'm sorry. I'm just I, worst moderator ever. So, <laughs> how about you up there? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I got, so I, I think I locked down the apartment and put my deposit down. Um, so I heard about them in May and then put, but got on the waiting list and then it, I was confirmed, I believe in June or July. Um, and then I moved in a week before, before um, orientation. So I had a good week to kind of settle in, unpack, relax, and then, and that was enough for me. Um, it was a little hectic though because my parents were with me, so I had to like try to show them around and stuff. But mm -hmm. um, as much time as you can, if whatever is affordable for you. I mean, if you can get here a month early, it's even better. You know, whatever whatever you can. I mean, I couldn't afford more than a week though. So that's nice. Spring preview because, or sorry, orientation when you have orientation. That's like a built-in extra few days. Um, yeah. yeah, I agree with Michelle. Yeah, I moved in in a weekend. I think it was two weeks before. Yeah. Okay. I believe you were next. We need to start. Yeah, we'll have to. What have you guys done as far as paying for this lovely experience? Well, I'm lucky in that I have a Peace Corps fellowship, so that covers a good portion of my tuition. As well as um, I, so I, I work through work study, so I get some of that, and the rest I, I do loans. So I have fellowships from here and the School of Ed because I'm an out of state student. Um, I work to pay for like the monthly bills, um, but because I'm young and I'm straight from undergrad, my parents still support me. Speed it up. I managed to get some fellow, uh, fellowship here and also um, some scholarships at the School of Social Work. Um, from my experience, I don't know how, I can't say that for everybody, but I know for me, um, it's been very um, generous. I feel like the school has really good financial aid, especially when I was comparing it to other schools that I applied for. Um, U of M, one of the reasons why I picked U of M is because it was the most generous. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like there's tons of opportunities. I mean, there are competitive opportunities, like, like Prabhdeep was saying, like there's work study, there's um, GSI opportunities, and GSI opportunities is awesome. If you can get that, oh, yeah. um, you should, um, but you really got to network with the press, with the professors. So that's that's advice I can give you right now. Is like really try to um, build relationships with your professors. Let them know what kind of research interests you have, um, especially with it, re professors that you have the same it, research interests. Um, that way, most likely you'll um, hopefully get chosen for a GSI <coughs> position. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they full tuition, um, healthcare. They pay. They give you a stipend every month. Like they're really good. Try yeah. to check those yeah. out too, like uh, uh, School of oh, Communication, yes. I think, or Information, yeah. School of Psychology. I applied for the Psychology GSI, so I didn't get it, but it's still worth a try. Yes, you can teach. So I teach in the Political Science Department right now. I'm in grad school at a different area going into board, and you can teach in any department. You don't need to be like, right. affiliated with them. Like, and they do take board school I like applicants very seriously. So yeah. you do a good chance. That's a good point. Thank you. Um, let's go to another question right quick. You've had your hand up um, for a while. I'm just wondering, I did ask someone else during lunch, but I'm just wondering if any of you have thought about or are considering the PMF, and if, or if you know anyone who has um, I don't know about this year. Well, plenty. I think a few second years were at least interested. They have they have information sessions about the PMF. Um, that tends to happen after second fellowship. Does like the careers everyone what you're interested in that's one key thing tell everybody what you like what you want to do and people will find ways to get you into those kind of opportunities yeah. lesson learned there for me go ahead so we keep hearing about how great Michigan is in terms of being able to take courses across different schools and departments especially in your second year mm -hmm. have you guys had experiences where you've gone after electives and really can't get in and like how do you manage sort of like I mean sifting through first of all this huge course load but then Like at Ford or in other departments? Well, while you're at Ford, but it sounds like like we've heard a lot about how you can take classes in a whole variety yep. of schools. Is it pretty feasible to get in? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Like you're really not, and you know, there are not many cases where you end up on a wait list. For those not the crowd. I don't know. 
I mean, it does happen. It's not to say that it doesn't happen, but I think it's, I, don't, I think for a lot of courses, they're pretty understanding as well. If you have a lot of interest, I mean, you can appeal directly to professors. They, they like having the like personal, yeah. inform, personal contact. I, um, I've corresponded with a lot of professors in geographic information systems courses, and they are very, um, they're very sensitive to, to time management issues and travel issues because that, a lot of those classes are up on North Campus or across campus. So I find that there's not much yeah. of a problem there. Oh. Term, but like people who say, you know, work 40, 50 hours a week, but then like say they take an elective class or something that counts towards their degree, like are they set, is the, the Ford School offer classes? Right. Or like, you mm -hmm. can do that? The internship requirement. So they just want to make it as easy as possible for you to like figure out where your internship is going to be and for how long and to make it really open-ended for you. Yeah. So we have like eight minutes left. So any more questions we would greatly appreciate. Five minutes. Five, five minutes? minutes? Okay. We have five minutes coming from the back. Any, any other questions? Burning questions? Yeah. Let's go. So do you pay to park in the hill parking structure? There are. It's true. I, you can go through either one of those systems. Yeah, if you don't get there before 8, you won't find parking. Yeah. Other questions? Other questions. Open it up. Yeah. Do you all have email addresses? Yeah. I wrote mine down on my thing just because I'm going to have to run really quick um, after this. But we'll do the same. Yeah. You guys can totally we have our email have addresses. Thing. We don't have a board or anything. Yeah, so sorry. We'll it's covered up all nicely. Yeah? So, I mean, as far as like study spaces or as far as recreation yeah, spaces? Yeah, things like that too. Like, you know, go outside, go, go outside of the University of yeah, so I mean, we, we have access to a lot of different places. Um, Brackham Graduate School has a lot of great study spaces. We're all free to go there. I mean, you can walk into um, any of the common places like the Union, Pierpont Commons, or uh, Michigan League. I think Palmer Commons is also available to us at night. Yeah. Um, there's a million different nooks yeah, and crannies. It's a little bit more com compartmented. That's why I asked. Right. Well, so, no, it's, well, well, here you have to make reservations for some of the classrooms, like if you want a Ford classroom. But usually it's fine. Yeah. Um, sometimes people won't even make reservations. So if you look online and it's like 5 o'clock and there's no, res no reservation, you can go ahead and take the room. Okay. Yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah it's, there's also um, two other gyms. They're just a little bit further away. One's on North Campus. One's a little bit closer to the east side of Central Campus. So. Yeah, and there's also those gym. opportunities. I like uh, CCRB is good. I prefer the NCRB because that's where I live. So we had a question here. We did. Okay, let's go. Uh, how closely did you work with academic advisors when choosing your classes? Pretty closely for me. I wanted to fit in a lot of different courses just to make sure that my all my core courses were taken care of really early. Do you take the time to like really sit down with you? Yes. Want yes. To Lindsay oh, and I yeah. are besties. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I meet with mine almost every semester, especially right before uh, setting up classes. I do. Yeah. She answers yeah. sometimes she'll She's not via, here. via email as well. I answer a lot of my questions that way. Do we have one final, really quick question before we close this panel? <laughs> no pressure. Oh, come on. No pressure. No, something. <laughs> no? Okay. No, we're good. We're done. My favorite color is blue. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> right, Quickly answered. One final piece of advice. Think, um, oh, one final piece of advice. You guys go. Oh, I have one I always give, so if you've heard me say this before, I apologize. Um, it was the best thing that I heard when I came here at Ford is to be intentional with your learning. I've kind of been throwing that out there. It's cliche, but like think about what it means in terms of you being here and taking the classes and the, the opportunities that you take um, and get involved in. So just be intentional because it's, it's a short but long time. So. Get work done in groups with uh, fellow classmates. That's what I learned this semester. Last semester I didn't do it as do it as much. This semester I am, and I'm getting better grades. So it really does make a difference. I think it's always just a good uh, good life lesson to just be really open minded. But especially when you know, with your learning environment here at the Ford School, you'll find all these different topics that you didn't even know you were you were interested in, and it'll just it'll blow your mind the opportunities that you have to to work in these really cool things that you didn't even know were were possible. So I would like to personally thank um, our panelists that were here today. So thank you so much for coming and speaking in front of everybody. Thank you, moderator. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, moderator.